Hello, I'm Azita Arvani, General Manager of Rakuten Mobile Americas. And I'm going to talk to you about cloud native 5G and what's coming. I've been in the telco industry long enough to see the transitions from 2G to 3G and from 3G to 4G. But the transition from 4G to 5G is the one I'm most excited about. Because not only we can use 5G as an enabler for other industries to transform their industries, but also we could take the moment to radically transform our own networks. And that's what we've done at Rakuten Mobile. Rakuten Mobile sits in the context of Rakuten, the parent company, which is a cloud company at its DNA. We have over 70 different businesses that are all cloud-based. And marrying that with the deep telco domain expertise in Rakuten Mobile helped us propel to this cloud-native 5G architecture. In addition, when people think about moving into cloud-native architecture, they're thinking of perhaps working with a number of startups that might not be in business for long. But the fact that Rakuten, the, with the strong balance sheet and PL standing behind this architecture, should mitigate that concern. When we think about 5G, we're not thinking of connectivity as the end, but as a means to the end. So we look at 5G as a canvas that then we can paint services that serve industries and consumers and communities, smart cities. And what's important is actually the services. Of course, at Rocket, and we have a number of services in these areas, but we are working with partners to bring more services on top as well. Rakuten Mobile has two sides to the coin. There's the Rakuten Mobile, the mobile operator in Japan. That's the world's first and still the only fully virtualized cloud native network. And there is the Rakuten communication platform that we have made available to other mobile operators as a, it's sort of an easy button that they can use to go into cloud native architecture. Rakuten Mobile uses RCP so as and it's its first customer. So you can think of RCP as a solution made by an operator for operators. We launched our 4G service earlier this year, and that's uh, again world's first and still the only fully virtualized uh, cloud native network. And by virtue of having a very efficient and cost-effective uh, network infrastructure, we are able to pass those savings on to our customers and come offer them a plan that is a very simple plan we call Unlimited at half the price of the going service plan in the country. And again, we believe that by making the, the underlying connectivity more accessible to everyone, we get the traction and then we can offer services running on top of it. We started offering the 5G service end of September of this year, and we are offering that at no additional cost to, to the 4G service. We call it Tada 5G because that's uh, it's called free 5G in, in Japanese. And um, we are uh, working with two uh, wonderful uh, radio partners in both the sub-6 and millimeter wave, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on. So 5G for us, it's really sitting on top of six very key pillars. Uh, number one pillar is 5G is about cloud. You know, we are talking about running cloud software on top of commodity hardware. And that drastically reduces the price. We are talking about running it in containers, which makes things much more scalable. 5G is about radio. We're going from traditional vendor lock-in tower of a radio to open RAN and virtual RAN. 5G is also about automation. We've been relentless about automation. We are. Um, we want to make sure that if there's anything that needs to be done twice, we've automated that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. 5G is also about collaboration. By having an open architecture, we are inviting others to innovate at these various layers at a much more granular level. And we are cultivating the ecosystem with that. And we are able to offer immersive experiences in the various use cases. 5G is also about security. With openness, there is the responsibility for making things much more secure. So we are 
very diligent about security, and I'll touch upon that a little later on as well. 5G is also about organization. I know when we talk about 5G, we usually cover the technology. We don't talk about technology. Uh, we don't talk about organization, but organization is just as important. You know, uh, it's we have to get rid of the silos, and we have to bring in uh, folks that have that cloud mentality that that are able to continuously innovate and create agility in the system. 5G is about cloud. You know that. The importance of cloud cannot be overemphasized. You know, we are running our 5G software in containers on top of commodity off-the-shelf hardware, and even two types of commodity off-the-shelf hardware, which actually not only drastically reduces the cost from going from purpose-built hardware to COTS hardware, but even another drop from there going to only two SKUs of COTS hardware. Going from uh, virtual machines, which we which we used in 4G, that was good, uh, to containers, uh, are are giving us that much more elasticity, that much better performance, and also you know spinning out the containers are much faster, you know, in a matter of five seconds versus seven minutes with the virtual machines, and overall this is helping us with reducing the cost by improving the elasticity and uh, and scalability. 5G is about radio. It's very important that we go to open RAN and virtual RAN. In a traditional network, we're talking about vendor lock-in with one uh, tower of baseband radio units, antenna, all coming from one vendor. And in the open RAN, we've opened up uh, these layers. So we have different vendors able to innovate at these different modules. And as you can see later on, we very much leverage this. And given that the majority of the cost of the network comes from the RAN, making RAN more efficient is, is very, very powerful savings that you can have uh, in your CapEx. So uh, with the baseband unit that's not sitting at the base of the tower, it's, it's it converted to software running on top of commodity hardware in a data center rather than sitting outside uh, and and uh, that needs to be weatherproof that you have to send technicians to upgrade it and maintain it by having it in a data center and uh, it, you can scale it up and down based on actual traffic rather than provisioning it from for maximum possible traffic you can support multiple cell sites so there's a lot of efficiencies that you get by going to open virtual RAN. And with the 5G, as I mentioned, we have uh, two great examples of the radio units coming from different vendors. They're both uh, state-of-the-art, massive MIMO platforms, and we're very happy with those. And in addition, if you look at our entire portfolio of radios for various use cases, whether it's indoors, outdoors, deep indoors, and they're all covered by the same software, this is something that absolutely could not be done in a traditional uh, RAMs architecture. When it comes to automation, this is a, a part that we are very, very diligent about. We don't want to have a big operations uh, staff in our network. We want to be as, as efficient as possible, and we're applying AI and machine learning models to it to get it better and better. Just to give you an idea of what automation has brought us in terms of new ways of operating, just uh, provisioning new service for us takes three minutes as opposed to three hours in a traditional model. Or uh, activating a cell site. In 4G, it took us under 10 minutes to activate a cell site. It was all done automatically. In 5G, it's even uh, lower than that. It's under five minutes. And in terms of support personnel, this is a really great metric to look at. Uh, in a traditional network, you're talking about one field technician for every 1,000 subscribers. In our network, we have one service reliability engineer for every 20,000 subscribers. So that's a 20x improvement, so, which drastically reduces our operating expenses by a tune of 30%. Security, as I mentioned, is very, very important for us. And we're actually leveraging the openness by creating more visibility and more control points in the network. And we start with a trusted partners and very trusted supply chain, but we continuously monitor and manage that. And we have implemented a zero trust security posture. And we've been honored by 
uh, being designated as the State Department's uh, 5G clean telco company. Now, I want to mention to you that the RCP, the cloud-native mobile network, is the future. We all agree it's in the future. It's just a matter of getting there. And we believe that by creating the proof point in Rocket and Mobile and by creating Rocket and Communications platform, we want to make it easier for others to get there. And just a word on what is Rocket and Communications platform. So it's made up of three layers. At the bottom layer is the cloud platform layer. This is the efficient distributed state-of-the-art platform layers based on Kubernetes and containers and uh, toughened up for telco requirements that's sitting on top of just two flavors of COTS hardware. Then the next layer up is the functions, the network functions layer. This is the layer that you know, the, the network functions are disaggregated from the hardware. So those also run on top of COTS uh, platform. And those come from different vendors. And they could be telco workloads or they could be IT workloads. And that's where you really take advantage of the openness. And the layer on top is the overarching, what we call intelligent and secure operation that makes sure that this entire multi-vendor open system runs as a whole, as a holistic, very efficient, very secure system. And you have one window to all the network functions in your network. You, you are able to analyze them, to manage them, to monitor them, to uh, be able to improve them. And we are running more and more AI and machine learning models on top of it. This is where the automation comes in. This is where you can think of it as OSS++ in this layer. So all of those together are offered in in a very simple uh, marketplace that's very similar to an app store. So we're all you know, trying uh, constantly to bring in these IT innovations into the telco and, and disrupt it. Now, all of that uh, we offer as a, um, as a uh, very innovative marketplace that we wanted to make even the purchasing process easier and more IT-like. So this is like an app store type of a user interface that you could purchase various services that you like, and those uh, can be offered by us or our partners. And, um, and so we are very excited about that as well. So in general, I wanted to encourage all of us in the telco industry to really seize the moment as we are moving into 5G Again, not just think about 5G as an enabler for other industries to transform themselves, but look inside and use this opportunity to transform our own networks. And if we can help in Rakuten, please let us know. We'll be happy to do so.